Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Sports Line. I'm Brendan Rigney, and alongside of me is Madison Elliott. We have a great show full of your LaSalle sports news, previews, and highlights. So let's get started with some game recaps, Madison. LaSalle's women lacrosse is now on a three-game winning streak as they wrapped up non-conference play Monday night at McCarthy Stadium. The University of California Golden Bears came to the East Coast and were met by a dominant explorer offense. LaSalle was led by freshman Tony Massetti and junior Alana Defendel, who both recorded hat tricks in the game. Aaron McCabe also found the back of the net twice, as well as Caitlin Fay and Ali Ilgenfrintz, both sending one past the Bears goalie. The top scorer for the Explorers, Caitlin Broadstrand, did not score in the game for the first time all season. However, she made a difference on the defensive side, causing two turnovers. Freshman goalie Gabby Antonelli got the win for the Explorers by making eight saves. The Explorers moved to 6-3 and three as they defeated the Golden Bears 10-6. They began Atlantic 10 Conference play on April 4th against Massachusetts. On March 20th, the women's tennis team faced St. Peter's and lost by a score of 4-2. to two. The Explorers only managed two singles victories at the meet. Junior Celesta Smith secured a win after taking her first two sets, while freshman Madison Galen ended up earning the win in a no-contest decision. Senior Chloe Treve was close to getting a, a point for LaSalle after she took her singles match into a third set, only to lose by a disappointing score of 10-7. Treve and Galen teamed up for doubles play, but were shut out 8 to nothing. The team took on St. Francis at home on Saturday, March 22nd. The Explorers had a bad start for the day, dropping both double matches. Senior Caitlin Coel and junior Celesta Smith played in the number one position in a tough match, but were unable to come out on top. In the number two position for LaSalle were Madison Gillen and Cecile Johnson, who lost with a score of 8 to 1. In singles play, the Explorers were unable to get a win as well. No Explorer was able to score more than two points against the talented St. Francis team. The Explorers dropped a tough match against St. Francis 5-0. The men's team also took to the home courts to hopefully end their spring season dry spell against St. Francis. Starting with doubles play, the Explorers just couldn't finish against the Red Flash. It was a tight set of matches with Fennell and Fetterman losing 9-7 against their opponents, McLeod and Robinson not finishing their set in a back-and-forth battle, and a tough loss for Berenado and Balico 8-3. But looking at these matches, McLeod and Robinson certainly stood out. They were a force to be reckoned with on the court, but in the end, it was an underwhelming finish as the DNF was called. Juniors Dale Fetterman and Deshaun Fennell had an impressive but heartbreaking match as well. LaSalle kept it close, but they could not rein in the tie with St. Francis capping off the set with a score of 9-7. Finally, the combo of freshman Brian Balico and senior Chaz Baronado couldn't get their chemistry going in an 8-3 loss. Moving into singles play, Balico is the only explorer to find redemption in this difficult match against St. Francis. Pulling off consecutive 6-2 and 6-1 sets, he scored the only win for LaSalle, a tough day on the courts. This was repeated at Villanova on March 23rd with another 6-1 loss. After getting shut out in every singles match, the doubles teams of Tom McLeod and Mark Robinson with Deshaun Fennell and Dale Fetterman teamed up to snag the singular point for the explorers, with both teams winning their matches 8-6. This marks a welcome turnaround for the team, even th though this was LaSalle's fifth consecutive loss coming off, coming off a perfect fall season, they seem to be closer and closer to breaking the slump. A rival match against St. Joe's was postponed on March 25th, so they looked to end the losing streak on Wednesday, April 2nd against Fordham. Switching gears over to the track, the men's track and field team started the 24 2014 outdoor track season this past Saturday at the University of Penn in the annual Philadelphia College Classic. In the 800-meter run, senior Kevin Grasso ran the top time of 1 minute and 59 seconds, taking first place almost two seconds ahead of the second-place finisher. In the 400-meter run, freshman Chris Hunter took, the second with, took second with a time of 49.93 seconds. Freshman Dallas Penny also competed in the 400-meter dash and finished with a time of 54.05 seconds. In the 3,000-meter run, sophomore Evan Larada ran the best time and bested his previous personal record with a time of 8 minutes and 40 seconds. A total of six runners set personal records at the unscored meet, foreshadowing a great season ahead. The women's track and field team also opened their outdoor season at Franklin Field. The women had an equally successful day, as many new personal records were set by individuals. Junior Taylor Hackett placed second in the 3,000-meter run with a time of 10 minutes and 1 second, replacing her old personal record by an astounding 28 seconds. Sophomore Kaylee McNally and Rebecca Scardaletti rounded out the top 10. On the sprinting side of things, freshman Sarah Dever competed in the 400-meter run, finishing with a time of 1 minute and 1 second. 
landing her in seventh out of a 29 runner field. In the 100 meter dash, senior Shanice Johnson came in fifth and compounded her solid performance with the fourth place finish in the long jump. Both the men's and women's team are back in action at the Stony Brook Invitational coming this weekend. Over on the diamond, the Lady Explorers were able to start their Atlantic 10 Conference play with a bang as they were able to sweep St. Bonaventure on Sunday, March 23rd. Cody Barr brings us coverage of a game. Take a look. Sunday proved to be another successful outing for Alicia Auten. The junior pitched seven solid innings against St. Bonaventure that was capitalized by timely hitting off LaSalle bats and gave the Blue and Gold their seventh win of the season. LaSalle got on board in the bottom of the second, already trailing by one. Megan Hodgson scored on a Bonnie's error. Hodgson came back in the third and notched her 19th RBI of the season, sending Michelle Haggerty home. The Explorers' offense exploded in the fourth as both Erica Rice and Emily Moran recorded their first home runs of the season. Rice has added two runs to the board while Moran treated herself to a solo shot. The Bonnies pitching got sloppy towards the fifth as the Explorers tacked on two more runs on consecutive wild pitches. The final LaSalle run came off of the bat of Rice as she sent a ball to, into right field, recording another RBI on a sack fly. On the defensive end of things, the Explorers were led by Alicia Auden, who scooped up eight ground balls from the circle, all good for outs, and struck out three while only walking two during her seven innings of service. The Explorers headed into the second game of the outing with confidence as they took down their first A-10 rival by a score of 8-1. to one. Game 2 saw even more offensive action as the Explorers combined for 13 hits that translated into 10 runs, giving the Explorers the 9-7 victory. Leading the Explorers was offense was Christina Basquera, who tacked on two RBIs, including one off a solo shot over the fence, and Megan Hodson, who brought in three RBIs of her own off a home run to left center. Emily Moran and Alicia Auten both sent balls over the fence recording solo homers for LaSalle. Sophomore Mary Kate Scott was credited with the win as she pitched all seven innings against the Bonnies. Scott gave up seven runs off of ten hits but notched four strikeouts. Scott also pitched her fifth game without giving up any walks. On Friday, March 21st, the men's baseball team took on the University of Massachusetts Minutemen in the first game of a three-game weekend series, which kicked off A-10 play for the Explorers. Due to the scheduling rules, LaSalle was the visiting team, although the game took place at Hank DeVinson Field. A win looked promising for the Explorers for most of the game, with the team putting up four runs in the first five innings, along with a strong pitching performance by Shane Holman up until the fifth. After getting two quick outs, Holman gave up four straight runs, allowing the Minutemen to tie it at the fourth. In extra innings, Mark Williams RBI'd to give the Blue and Gold a lead. However, UMass could, would have none of it as they pushed two runs across in the bottom of the tenth inning to pick up the win, seven to six. In Game 2, the Explorers sought revenge over the Minutemen. I headed to the defense and field to cover Saturday's, Saturday's game. Check it out. It was a windy day at Hank defense and field when the Explorers took up arms against the UMass Minutemen. The first inning went well enough for LaSalle as George Smith Jr. knocked a double down the right field line before reaching home after Mark Williams' sack fly to help the team get an early 2-0 advantage. UMass quickly answered in the second inning, however. Starting for LaSalle on the mound was Joey Rabbert, who walked three runners and gave up three runs in the second inning to put the Minutemen up 3-2. to two. The race for runs continued as explorer Kevin Barron found his way home after Smith Jr. singled in the third. In the fourth, right-handed pitcher Brian Mayer stepped onto the mound for LaSalle and gave up two more runs to give UMass the 5-3 to three advantage. Smith Jr. answered with a homer and Justin Kornblatt reached home due to Kevin Conroy's single to the tie of the game yet again at 5-5. Five to five. Heartbreak came next. Freshman pitcher Andrew Craig took over for the Explorers and gave up a three-run homer from UMass's Kellen Hagel. The South could only score one more run and left three men on base in the ninth as the Minutemen took home the win, 8-6. to six. Hoping to avoid the sweep, the Explorers sent Sean O'Neill to the mound to stop the bats of the Minutemen. And a wise decision it was. O'Neill delivered his strongest out outing of the season, going six forceful innings while seeding eight batters, a season high, carrying a no-hitter into the fifth inning. O'Neill retired two UMass batters before allowing his only hit of the game. Kevin Barron sparked the Explorer attack early on with a leadoff single and a run in the first inning, extending his reached base streak to 24 games, dating back to last season. Two more runs off UMass errors in the top of the eighth inning were enough for Adam Cherry to secure his third save of the season, out hitting the Minutemen 10-3. LaSalle picked up victory 3-0. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, Rohan Brown will be sitting down with his friend and teammate, O.J. Lewis, to discuss the abrupt and distant, disappointing end to the basketball season, as well as his high hopes 
and goals for next year. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Nicole Malakowski, a U.S. Air Force Fighter Squadron Commander and the first woman pilot with the United States Air Force Aerial Demonstration Team. My fellow airmen and I know that each of us plays a huge part in our victories, whether in the air or on the ground. We couldn't accomplish our mission without using everyone's skills to reach our goals. Embracing our differences and working together is also what has made America strong. Thank you for your support, and remember, our strength lies in our diversity. This message brought to you by the United States Air Force. A diagnosis of breast cancer changes your life forever. She told me I needed a mastectomy. I was scared. Absolutely in shock. But you need to know that you're not alone. There are teams of medical professionals, support groups, and therapists, and those who can help you plan for life after cancer. Before you undergo surgery for breast cancer, get the facts. Make sure you know your breast reconstruction options. For more information, visit broadayusa.org. Hello, my name is Rohan Brown, and welcome to another interview segment on Sportsline. Here we have Elijah Juan Lewis, but we like to call him OJ. How you doing? How you doing? Very good. OJ is on the basketball team. Now, if you could describe the season in one word, what would you say? One word, rough. 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 And why do you say rough? Because in the beginning of the season, we had a, we had a lot of hype. We was, we expected, we was expected a lot, but right. throughout the season, as you see, it was just rough, tough losses, a lot of them in overtimes by one point. Mm -hmm. Games that we were supposed to win, we lost unexpected, like Dayton. Right. We were supposed to lose that game, but we lost it. It happens. So what would you say is the difference between last year's team and this year's team? Effort and energy. Effort and energy? Not, not scoring, but the energy and the leadership is lacked. It was lacking this year? It was lacking. Did it have anything to do with Ramon Galloway? Um, parts of it, because he was always energetic, right. regardless if he was scoring or not, he always kept everybody's spirits up, energized them from the bench or on the court. And I just think this year we didn't have that, like, everybody, nobody was juicing up everybody like he was. Juicing. Because I'm juice. All right. So. You said it on purpose. Yes, All right, I that's, did. That's cute. Um, Thank <laughs> you. So you're losing four seniors this year. Yeah. Taylor Dunn. Tyreek Duran, Tyrone Garland, Sam Mills, and you're getting some transfers and some redshirt freshmen. How do you think the team this year will change from the team next year? Well, people that wasn't at our practice doesn't know how good our scout team was, which is which uh, contains all the transfers and the red shirts. Right. And, and you were a part of the scout team. I was a part of the scout team, yeah. Okay. And actually, almost every day of practice, we kind of beat up on the four seniors in the other blue team, which which you were part of the blue team, right? I was. Yeah, you were. But I played on the scout team most of the time. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry yeah. I didn't know that. It's okay. But yeah, sorry. We, okay, sorry. We beat up on them a lot at practice. So I pretty I think that the transfers in the team next year is gonna be a real good show. Right. Yeah. We got a lot of different people with different aspects and abilities that we didn't have before. All right. So because there's four seniors leaving and next year there will be three. How do you think the leadership aspect will change? I think we'll have more than just one leader. Right. Like everybody that was on the scout team and then people like, so like you for instance, and you for instance, we'll keep it like that. Right. And Khalid Lewis. Yeah. Both of y'all were very energetic, like in the weight room and practice, even though y'all wasn't the seniors, y'all were still energetic. Okay. And I give props on that. All right. So yeah. addition to y'all, uh, addition to y'all, right. we were, we have uh, Jordan Price, Mars Stokes, myself, right. Cleon Roberts, who also were very energetic in yeah. practice. So, a com when we, once we combine that next year, it's gonna be crazy. All right. So let's step off the court for a second. Step off the court. Get more personal. Always love doing this. Uh, what is your favorite Disney movie? Lion King. <laughs> All right. Why? Simba. Simba. 
Where's the where's the relevance to Simba? Because he's a boss. He's a boss. And I'm a boss. You're a boss. Yes. All right. Okay, then. Do you have any hobbies besides being a boss? Well, occasionally I like to sing. It's like a hidden talent. Sing? Could you? No. Could you write? Could you do something for us right now? No, my uh, throat hurts. No, actually. I would. I think everyone would appreciate if you. I would appreciate it too, but my throat hurts. Your throat, bothering. yeah. That's all right. That's cool. Yeah. So, you sing. What else? Um, play tennis. Tennis. Yeah, with one of our teammates. Right. Hank. Hank Davis. Hank Davis. Yes. Yeah, I like to play tennis a little bit here and there. Um, I like to eat a lot. You like to eat a lot. You're just yeah. a well-rounded person. Well-rounded. Eat, play tennis, sing, play basketball. Got hit the time, oh baby. My you know what I'm saying? Ooh. Ah. Well, you know what? I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll be back after this commercial break. We have a job to do out here today. To be a winning team, you have to work like a winning team. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. Looks like a lot of work is going into this. This is what it feels like to be part of a team. A winning team. The action team. The action team. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? Training is about more than muscle. It's about inner strength. So I push myself. That's why I serve in the United States Coast Guard. I train with the best. A team that shares my drive and commitment. We collect intelligence, guard our shores against drug smugglers, and keep our waterways safe. Because our nation expects more. If you expect more, maybe you were born ready. Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. The environment is my passion. Every day, I live for the outdoors and all of its challenges. That's why I enlisted in the Coast Guard. Now, I serve to protect the environment and defend my country. It's like I was born for this. Were you born ready for a greater challenge? Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. Welcome back. We're going to send it over to Cody Barr, who joins us for this week's edition of Exploring Headlines. Take it away, Cody. Thanks, Brendan. The field hockey team was awarded the Gladiator last week as they joined six other A-10 teams in having a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or higher. Along with the team's own distinction, 11 players earned personal recognition by joining the Division I National Academic Squad. Speaking of academics, both the men's and women's swim and dive teams earned honors for their scholastic, scholastic achievements. The CSCAA named both squads Scholar All-Americans. The men's team gathered a team GPA of 3.01 last fall, while the women surpassed that with an impressive 3.29. As if to prove something of their own, the men's track and field team garnered accolades for their work in the classroom as well. Senior Nico Greco and Vince Perosi were named to the A-10 Academic All-Conference team. Greco is a digital arts major with a GPA of 3.6, and Perosi is an accounting major with a GPA of 3.73. Moving from the classroom to the court, Alicia Cropper of the women's basketball team has been named the Philadelphia Big Five first team. The redshirt junior led the team this year in scoring with 14.7 points per game. This is her first time receiving this honor, as this is the first season that she is an explorer due to transfer regulations. Over the, on the men's side, Tyreek Dern was named to the All Philadelphia Big Five first team for the second consecutive year, and junior Jarrell Wright snagged second team honors. Dern led the explorers in scoring, assists, steals, free throws, free throw percentage, and minutes played, and led the Big Five in steals. Wright, on the other hand, led the team in shooting percentage for the third straight year and took the top spot in offensive rebounds with 96. Moving on to spring sports, lacrosse freshman Allie Ilgenfritz was given the nod for Rookie of the Week honors after she got her first career hat trick against Delaware State. The rookie has seen time in eight of the nine games so far this season and looks to secure a starting position for next year's squad. 
And finally, baseball slugger Mark Williams was named Player of the Week by the Big Five for his two home runs, two doubles, and six RBIs during last week's contests. He currently leads the team with 16 RBIs and has a slugging percentage of 537, which ranks fifth in the A-10. Well, thanks for joining us, Cody. Uh, we're going to take another quick recess, but when we return, Zach Ranitsky will, sit, will be dishing out this week's marquee matchup, so stick around. The environment is my passion. Every day, I live for the outdoors and all of its challenges. That's why I enlisted in the Coast Guard. Now, I serve to protect the environment and defend my country. It's like I was born for this. Were you born ready for a greater challenge? Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. We have a job to do out here today. To be a winning team, you have to work like a winning team. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. Looks like a lot of work's going into this. This is what it feels like to be part of a team. A winning team. The action team. The action team. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? Hello and welcome to another edition of Marquee Matchup. I'm Zach Ranitsky. This week, we want to highlight our women's track and field team. After a promising weekend at the Philadelphia College Invitational, we look to them this weekend to bring home more accolades at the Stony Brook Invitational in New York State. Key runners we are looking towards are Megan McGlinchey and Michelle Capozzi, who are among the strongest runners on the team. This will be their first outdoor meet, and they bring a promising outlook for this season. On the jumping side of things, we look to freshman Amber Jackson, who had a very successful indoor season. Placing many times, we also look to Shannon Johnson, who last weekend placed in the long jump for the Explorers. Although track is more concentrated and how each individual does, it takes the whole team to gain points and pull the win. To do this, we need to look at the keys of the meet. For Megan McGlinchey, who will be competing in the 1,000 meter run, she needs to keep focused and not jump the gun by going out too fast. She needs to pace herself for the first four laps and then start to speed up within the first fifth and sixth lap. Once it comes down to that final 800, she needs to take off and blow the competition out of the water, which is something she is very good at doing. Michelle Capozzi will also be competing in the long distance events, and she must keep a close eye on McGlinchey, who will help her pace and develop as the stronger runner this season. On the jumping side of things, the jumpers need to keep their cool, concentrate and keep their muscles warm to be able to leap those jumps that gain us the points. It will take the whole team to take that win from the women explorers. We know they are capable of doing just that. Well, that's it for this week's marquee matchup. I'm Zach Ranitsky. Thanks for watching. They said I would die. My doctor told me I had ALS. They said I wouldn't live to see my kids grow up. But their doctors were wrong. Multifocal motor neuropathy, referred to as MMN, is a rare disorder that progressively weakens muscles in the extremities and is often mistaken for other serious neuropathies as well as the ultimately fatal condition known as ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. But unlike those disorders, MMN affects only lower motor nerves and has no sensory involvement. Symptoms tend to be asymmetric and characterized by weakness, cramping, twitching, or muscle atrophy usually beginning in the hands. Disease progression depends on the length of time the patient remains without the correct MMN diagnosis. With early diagnosis and treatment, most MMN patients continue doing the things they enjoy. Cooking. Gardening. Spending time with my family. For more information, please visit these websites. 
Hi, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Nicole Malakowski, a U.S. Air Force Fighter Squadron Commander and the first woman pilot with the United States Air Force Aerial Demonstration Team. My fellow airmen and I know that each of us plays a huge part in our victories, whether in the air or on the ground. We couldn't accomplish our mission without using everyone's skills to reach our goals. Embracing our differences and working together is also what has made America strong. Thank you for your support, and remember, our strength lies in our diversity. This message brought to you by the United States Air Force. A diagnosis of breast cancer changes your life forever. She told me I needed a mastectomy. I was scared. Absolutely in shock. But you need to know that you're not alone. There are teams of medical professionals, support groups, and therapists, and those who can help you plan for life after cancer. Before you undergo surgery for breast cancer, get the facts. Make sure you know your breast reconstruction options. For more information, visit broadayusa.org. All right, welcome back. Uh, so, Cody, where have you been? Um, it's been a couple of months. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> haven't seen you guys in a while. Good Actually, to have you back. Um, thank you. I was away in Stanford, Connecticut. I was interning uh, with NBC uh, for the Sochi Olympics, so got to be away from you guys. But I did watch every single show, you know, and you guys did a great job. So, thank you for you know not dropping the ball. You know, <laughs> we did a good job. Did yeah. You I, oh my gosh. Are you lying That's, to us? No, my no. Okay, no, well. Not at all. I'm glad to have you back. Uh, she'll be on the show a little more often, hopefully. Okay, well, if you can make it out to this week's marquee matchup, make sure to tune in next week for our coverage. Be sure to keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by following us on Twitter at Sportsline LTV. We post game updates and sneak peeks into the upcoming show. Also, check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash LaSalle TV. We welcome you to send us your thoughts and suggestions about the show on either website. For Madison and Cody and our entire Sportsline team, I'm Brendan Rigney, and we'll see you at the game.